Hey, Jay, how are you? I'm so good. I love your Jaws poster. Thank you so much. So, Jay, what got you interested in joining Quark? Um, oh, the script. Yeah. Uh, it was brilliant. It was so interesting. I was learning something new every page. Um, and a lot of things I was learning were things that women actually go through every day. I mean, it wasn't made up stuff. I mean, it was it was all there. And I was like, wow, what, what, how? you have to do this. And like, just the concept of this clicking top, a clock, clicking, ticking clock, you know, counting right. down on whether you can do something or not. We don't have that as men. We know, we'll never understand that type of pressure. Um, so yeah, that's what drew me to it. And, and Alexis brought a brilliant script and a vision for the movie where I was like, okay, this sounds pretty special. And how was it like working with Diana and Saul on this? Because they were really good in this as well. Oh, brilliant. I mean, Diana's amazing. Mate, you know, she's, I said it before, but she's in every scene of the movie. So she was in every day, all day. Um, and she was, she, she smashed it out of park. And she was such a joy to work with. She never complained. She never... She was always so grateful. She was never tired. She was brilliant. And Saul is just a legend. You know, that scene where we we have the um, Shabbat dinner, you know, he was just regaling us with his tales of, like, the Unforgiven and stuff like that. He was oh, brilliant man. to work with, man. I mean, like, watching his – he's so natural, and every take was different with him, which I remember seeing, and I, I, I love that. Every take was different, but every take was right. Um so he was great. It was great. I learned a lot, actually, just sitting next to him, watching him act. I learned a lot from him. Man, and that's really great stories that you hear from on set, right? Just having an actor of his caliber and his presence on film must have been outstanding. To just to I mean, witness. talking about Unforgiven and Clint Eastwood and Richard Harris and Gene Hackman. And, yeah, you know, he's working for all these people you're just blown away, you know, and these stories and you just, mate, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was, it was uh, you know, you, you're very lucky to experience those things. And what really spoke to you about your character in Quark as well? Uh, I think my thing was no matter how supportive we think we are we're never that supportive <laughs> right <laughs> you know like at the end of the day we still have our agenda and even though like my whole point was to show him as a very loving supportive husband it was always mixed in with a little bit of like i would want to i do want a kid you know and um when the twist happens we see his true colors obviously it's an exaggerated version of it but, but like um it was uh it was interesting to play that character and go from one end of the spectrum to the next. Like, it's the ultimate betrayal, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed that. And it was interesting because me and Alexis were, when Alexis wrote it, she didn't write it that Aiden knew that she'd gone to a clinic to do it. He just knew of this clinic. And I was like, I think he knew. Like he knew when she said, I'm going for this job. He knew she was going to clinic when she was spiraling out. He knew. Um, so I, I, I uh, we decided to go that way. And I think it worked pretty well. And when that twist happens and you read that in the script, is any of you like in the back of your mind, like, oh, this is great, but I really hope it lands on screen like it did on paper. Of course. Yeah, of course it does. And then when we were shooting it, I knew it would. Um, just because Alexis, that's the thing. Alexis is so clear on her vision. She knows what she wants. She knows how she's going to cut it all together. She knows, even when you're shooting, she knows where she's going to go to and stuff like that. So um, I thought it would when we shot it. And then when we watched it, I was like, yeah, it lands. Did it yeah. land for you? Oh, yeah, it did. It kind of surprised me at the end, too. Good, good. Well, that's the main thing, yeah. And so did you watch the finished product of Quark yet? Yeah, we had the premiere in New Orleans a couple of weeks ago. And, man, watching Melora in this was just amazing, right? Because mm. we know her from the office, her comedic mm. chops. Mm. But what she does in this clinic is mm. kind of manical and haunting, right? I mean, she just shows this 
amount of range that you don't really see from her all that often. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, this is a danger of like what we do is like actors can do everything. Well, we try to do everything. And then sometimes your break will come along in a comedy and suddenly you're pigeonholed as a comedy actor. I mean, I remember when I started, I used to always get comedic roles and I wouldn't get seen for dramas. And then I happened to get this show called The Fosters, which was more of a drama, a teen drama. And suddenly I wasn't seen for any comedies because I'd suddenly become a drama actor. And, it, it, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, just because you do something where that's what you're known for. I mean, look at Brian Cranston, Michael, Malcolm in the Middle right. and then yeah. Breaking Bad, you know, but I think it took him a while to shake off that Malcolm in the Middle thing. So, yeah, yeah. And what Jason Bateman did the same thing with the rest of development and then Ozark. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm glad she did this. And I think it's going to, I know that she needs many more doors opened up for her because she's brilliant. Right. Um, but I, I hope that she's seen, you know, when you do an iconic role like Jan from The Office, it's hard to shake it off, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. So what are you most looking forward to audiences and critics um, getting out of Quark? Um, I think that they're going to... First of all, if you love your horror, it's got the horror elements to it. If you like your psychological thriller, it has those elements to it. Um, the performances are great. Um I don't know about me, but the other guys are great. <laughs> uh, it's shot beautifully. I hope that people walk away and go, huh, I didn't think of it like that, but now I do. You know, I, I didn't see it like that before. I think as men, you're going to walk away and go, oh, man, I had no idea. I thought I knew, but I didn't. And I think women might, because uh, that's what I love about Alexis. It's, it's quite balanced. A lot of the pressure that she faces comes from her friends, her female friends, female doctors, you know, all that stuff. Of course, there's a pressure from her dad and Aiden at the end, but his is done in a more manipulative way. Um, but yeah, I, I think everyone's going to walk away and be like, ha, maybe I will be a little bit less judgy on people now, hopefully. <laughs> and one final question for you, Jake. Did you have any favorite horror movies growing up? Growing up, I shouldn't have been watching horror movies. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I did watch horror movies when I was... My, I think the best horror movie ever is The Exorcist. I still think it's the best movie. I don't think anything's ever come close to that. Um, would you count Jaws as a horror movie? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, Jaws is my most favourite movie of all time. So if you count Jaws as a horror movie, then this, yes. If you're talking about horror movies that don't involve sharks, I'm going to go The Exorcist. Well, Jay, thank you so much for joining us at Infamous Horrors today. It's been fun, and congratulations on Quad. Thank you so much, my friend. Have a good day.